Hello, I'm making this video today to inform you guys of benzodiazepine withdrawal, try to reduce some of the stigmas that have come up about that, and also try to clarify some of the myths that are commonly believed about benzodiazepines. Um, first of all, just in case you guys don't know, benzodiazepines um, they include medications such as Xanax, Clonopin, Valium, Enovan, and a lot of others, but those are the most common ones that you probably hear. Number two, they're not meant to be recreational pills. A lot of people say they are happy pills or chill pills, but they actually, well, I guess they do kind of chill you, but they're not happy pills. They depress your body. They depress you. Um, they're Though some people may use them rec recreationally, that's not what they're used to treat. Um, a lot of illnesses that they are used for include insomnia, um, they can be used in place of or before anesthesia for some medical procedures, generalized anxiety disorder, which can happen with lots of illnesses, even people with Lyme disease are often treated with benzodiazepines along with list of other medications, um, panic disorder with or without agoraphobia, which I want to make a video on agoraphobia, but I'm going to make that totally separate, um, epilepsy or other seizure disorders, and to reduce alcohol withdrawal symptoms, and also as a muscle relaxant. These are some of the things that benzodiazepines are usually used for. Um, they're not supposed to be used very long term, but doctors unfortunately will hand them out pretty much like candy and um, it's not really that hard to get prescribed a benzodiazepine nowadays. Um, if you look up how long you're actually supposed to be on a benzodiazepine, you're not supposed to be on it for more than two to four weeks. Um, you can usually stop a benzodiazepine without any harmful symptoms in the two to four week period, but once you get past that, you enter into the withdrawal syndrome where your body has become tolerant on it and you can no longer get off the drug, drug without taking precautions to reduce withdrawal. Now, a lot of just Doctors will prescribe these drugs, especially for people with anxiety and seizure disorders, for 20 years or more. And it's really sad to see that doctors do this to people. Um, but unfortunately, it's a real thing and they don't really warn their patients about it. And a lot of people do this unknowingly. It's not because they want to be drug addicts. It's not because they want to be looked at as somebody with a drug addiction and so there's really a stigma that I want to try to knock down about benzodiazepine withdrawal. Having a benzodiazepine withdrawal syndrome does not make you an addict and most of the time I'm just afraid to even tell people that that's what I'm sick with um, because a lot of people just look at me like I'm crazy or an addict. So as you can see people take these medications recommended by their doctors simply because they're trying to, to treat they're trying to treat legitimate health problems and they're not properly warned about the effects of taking them long term which can include tolerance withdrawal simply meaning the drug no longer has the same effect on your body because you've been taking it for so long and you'll have to crave more of it to feel better and also so many people are taken off of it too quickly and a lot of people, you know, they feel better, they're like, my anxiety is better, or whatever they were taking it for is better, and so they want to get off. And then a doctor will try to take them off in two weeks when they've been on it for years, and then they will go into convulsions and major panic attacks and difficulty breathing and those, like, dry heaving stuff that I have had. And if I stutter a lot, um, that is actually part of benzo withdrawal that can happen, stuttering and difficulty concentrating. It also can affect your memory. Um, but I'll get into the symptoms later on. That's going to be a separate point that I make here. Um, but anyway, 
a lot of people are taken off this too quickly and they end up in withdrawal syndrome and to feel better they usually have to get back on the medication and just get off at a slower pace, usually a much slower pace than the doctor tried in the first place. Um, the withdrawal syndrome can al already be affecting your body by the time you get on it and it can take months or years to safely get off of the drug and actually heal your body entirely and to get rid of the withdrawal syndrome. Benzo withdrawal is not a joke. A lot of people probably just think, oh, you're just anxious because you took it for anxiety and now you're just feeling anxious because you're not taking it anymore. But it's so much more than that and it can debilitate some people to where they are housebound until they're actually healed from it. Some of the symptoms from it include but I certainly want to make sure that that's established. It's certainly not limited to anxiety and panic attacks, convulsions and seizures, electric shock feelings, heart palpitations, rapid weight loss or weight gain, tremors, vomiting, breathing problems, fatigue, phobias, um, specifically agoraphobia is a huge one, and also fear of water, I forget the name for that at the moment, but it is a really strange symptom to develop, but it does develop in many cases, and vertigo, and some people just, um, major depression is obviously a thing when you're taking benzodiazepines and will withdraw as well, but some people end up with symptoms so bad they just end up ending it and suicide can be a side effect in my opinion of benzo withdrawal. People do eventually heal from withdrawal and not everyone experience it with, experiences withdrawal the same but I just find it really important to raise awareness from those suffering with benzo withdrawal syndrome and people just misunderstand them all the time and it really needs to be um, there really needs to be awareness raised for this syndrome. It is a real thing, and though it can be caused by drug abuse, it's not usually the case, even though some people think so. And as with any other drug, it could be drug abuse, but with benzos, it's typically not the case. And if you know a loved one suffering, or if you yourself are suffering from benzodiazepine withdrawal syndrome, then I highly encourage you to educate yourself from reliable sources. Make sure it's a reliable source, not every source out there is going to tell you the same thing. Um, but just educate yourself on topics such as this from the Ashton Manual. That is a great place to go to. Um, I, I will try to get the link down at the bottom, but I'm using a mobile device at the moment. I'm not sure if I'll be able to. I might have to get on my computer later. Um, but I will paste that when I get the chance to. Um, and that, I believe that's benzo.org.uk. And thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching it, please click the like button and share and subscribe. And please help me raise awareness for this. Thank you.